Welcome back, fourth graders. It's another beautiful day outside, sunny and warm and lovely. Now, I hope that you did your homework last night, so and we'll go over that together, but let's pray before we start. Thank you again, God, for giving us a beautiful day, for giving us um, minds that work efficiently, uh, minds that can grasp concepts. I pray that you would help us to focus so that we can finish what you have started for us today. We love you, we love you, and appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, if you go ahead and get those books out and open um, and find page 276. 276. Now, maybe you forgot. I hope you didn't. We've been studying prepositions. Now, a preposition, just to refresh your memory, a preposition describes the relationship between a noun or a pronoun and another word in the sentence. A noun or a pronoun and another word in the sentence. Last evening, when you did 278 in numbers 1 through 6, you were just finding the prepositions in there. That should have been really easy for you. Number 1, of stone. Number 2, to the top. Number 3, on the platforms. Number 4, in the sea. Number 5, in the daytime. All of those are really simple little common, common prepositions that start the phrases with the preposition at the beginning, the noun at the end. That's what we want to talk about a lot today, that relationship that that little phrase has to something else in the sentence. Okay? All right, going back to number seven. The first American lighthouse was built, you know, wouldn't say at, you're never going to say at a year. You're going to say in a year. So it's going to be in 1776. Number eight, in Boston Harbor. Number nine, by the British in the Revolutionary War. Number 10, after the war. Number 11, had about 60 keepers. Number 12, for the first American Lighthouse. is 13, of his day. 14, in the sea. 15, about the lighthouse. About as in around. So I hope that you're starting to feel they have a little bit of a rhythm, a little bit of a cadence to them. This to this this to that, this to something else. That's going to show the relationship between this and something else. Most of the time, uh, if you remember what I had up here yesterday, they're going to answer those questions, how or where? Where were they when that happened in 1776? How were they going to do it um, in a hurry? Yeah, it's always going to kind of answer one of those questions, but be in a phrase and not just a single word. So if you flip over to the next lesson, 277, we're going to talk about that object of the preposition again. Okay, so here's my little friend. This is my little little sheep, my little lammy. My little lammy, I've got some sentences up here about him. Now, if I think about the lamb, where is he if I put him right here and I stand in front of him? He's behind me, right? So the prepositional phrase in this particular case, the preposition always starts the phrase behind, and then it has the noun after it. Let me get this open. If you put parentheses around them so you know that they're the phrases, the preposition comes first, the noun goes at the end. Same thing here. On the desk, under the sweater. The preposition is going to be the green one. That's what starts the phrase. Under starts the phrase. The noun is going to be at the end. Desk. Sweater. So this little lamb here, he's going to be behind me. He might be on the desk. He could be under my sweater. So they're going to show the relationship between the, in this case, the lamb and the sweater or in this case, the lamb and me, or in this case, the lamb and the desk. So that's what a prepositional phrase shows. It shows a relationship between uh, something else, a noun in the sentence, and the preposition. Okay, look at 277. It's gonna be real simple today. Look at numbers one through six. Today, instead of finding the preposition, they want you to find the object. They want you to find the noun at the end of the phrase. So if you look at number one, what's the preposition at the beginning? It's down, because down is one of those prepositions. If you can't remember what they are, look back to the green box on the previous 
pages to 75 or uh, back to your um, handbook is where that larger list was, but these are going to be pretty common ones. If down is a preposition, down where? Down the stairs. Now you notice that there's two words in between that. Down the basement stairs. Down the basement stairs. So here we've got number one. Down the basement stairs. Now think about that for a second. If you know that down is a preposition, and you know, okay, where? Down what? Down the stairs. Not down the basement, not down the the, but down the stairs. So stairs is the, the down is, we'll put this in green to be consistent. Down is a preposition. And then the stairs would be the noun, the object, at the end of the prepositional phrase. So do you notice here, a prepositional phrase can have just two words, just the preposition and the object of the preposition, which is a noun. It can have three words, a preposition, a noun at the end, which is the object of the preposition, and maybe even a little adjective stuck in the middle. Remember those were article adjectives, those special kinds. Here we've got three under with sweater. Here we've got four words in the prepositional phrase. We've still got down, that's still the preposition, and we've still got a noun, down where? Down the stairs. But we've got one, two adjectives talking about the stairs. Which stairs? The stairs, right there. Which stairs again? The basement stairs, not the front stairs, not the back stairs, but the basement stairs. So these prepositional phrases, you can have just two words. You can have three or four. Let's see, you could say down the dark basement stairs. You could have five. Probably not going to have more than that most often, but you can have two or three or four more or more words in a prepositional phrase. You've got to have minimum of two. You've got to have the preposition and you've got to have the noun at the end. So those are the required ones. The others are going to be extra adjectives kind of as interrupters stuck between the two. So if you go back to our book again, number one, down the basement stairs. So we're going to circle stairs as being the object. So that's what they want you to do. They want you to circle the object in each phrase. You think you can do that? Go ahead and do numbers, let's see, two through six there. Just give you a couple seconds. Two through six. You can do it. I bet you've got it already. It's a really simple pattern. Preposition, maybe a little adjective, and a noun at the end. So number two would be inside. Inside what? inside the circle. So you should have circled circle. Number three, around the what? Around the corner. So corner is what you circled as the object of the preposition. Number four, under what? Under the bed. Bed is what you should have circled with under as the preposition. Number five, beside the what? Beside the fence. So fence is what you circled with beside being the preposition at the beginning. And number six, with my friends, with is a preposition. With what? With my friend. So friend is the noun, the object of the preposition. Now what they want you to do now down in 7 through 11 is put those parentheses around the whole phrases. Just like we did here. You're going to put parentheses around each phrase. You go, I'm not sure I can find them. What you need to look for, as always, is the preposition. So if you look in number seven, the Federal Lighthouse Service started in 1770, excuse me, 1789. Well, do you see a preposition there from the green box? I do, in. It's always gonna be a preposition. In what? In 1769. Almost always when you have a date, you're gonna have an in before it, and that's gonna be a preposition. So you're gonna put parentheses around in 1776. That's all they're asking you to do, put the parentheses. Number eight, Congress wanted a national system for American lighthouses. Do you see any little tiny words? Because most prepositions are pretty small. Any little tiny words there that are from the green box? Yes, obviously, four. For what? For American lighthouses. For, preposition, object at the end, the noun. Okay, lighthouses. Number nine, oh, this one's tricky. This one has two phrases. Often, often, often in English, you will have multiple prepositional phrases in one sentence. 
over the river, through the dale, to grandmother's house, we go. The we and the go is a subjugated verb. All those other pieces are little prepositional phrases added to make more sense. That's what a prepositional phrase does. It gives more information so that the sentence is more interesting. The sentence has more meat to it. Uh, those of you that know about the whole cake idea, you, you have to have the, the, the cake, the noun and the verb, the subject and the verb together. You have to have those. But if that's all you have, it's a pretty dry cake want some frosting on it. So the frosting are going to be those prepositional phrases, those adjectives, those adverbs, those other things that make it a better sentence. Number, let's see, number nine. You see the little tiny words there? In 1839, with the Coast Guard. Are you also seeing where they often land? Oftentimes a prepositional phrase are going to end at the end of a sentence. Or perhaps if you look there on number nine in 1839, that's a prepositional phrase. It's at the beginning. Oftentimes they're going to be way over here at the beginning, way over here at the end. And you'll have the cake, the meat of what you need, right in the center, the subject and the verb. Now that's not to say the prepositional phrases can be anywhere in a sentence, but most often they're going to be at the beginning and the end. Number 10, do you see the little by keepers? By is the preposition, keepers is the object of the preposition. Today, a system of automation controls most lighthouses around the world. This one has two as well, two prepositional phrases. Did you find them? Of automatic controls, and then go to the end, around the world, because of and around are prepositions. Prepositions are never, like I reminded you, they're never going to be alone. You're never going to have just a preposition floating around doing nothing. Um, they're going to have a noun that comes after it. That's the requirement. You're not just going to say, the lamb is behind. You're going to say, the lamb is behind who or what? Mrs. Murdoch. The lamb is, just saying the lamb is, not much of a sentence. It does have a subject, it does have a verb, but not much else. So in order to make it more interesting and to fill out that sentence, you're going to put a prepositional phrase on it. The lamb is what? He's on the desk. The lamb is what? He's under the sweater, down the basement stairs. Hopefully the lamb isn't going down the basement stairs. All right, well, that covers the simplicity of really of this lesson, that you've got a prepositional phrase. It starts with a preposition. It ends with a noun that's the object of the preposition. It may have an adjective or two tossed in the middle there. And that's really all that there is to it. So tonight you're going to do 278. Don't forget to do the apply and write. Some of you ask, do we have to do that part? Yes, you do. That's where you actually get to make it your own and do something on your own rather than just picking things out. So make sure you, you do what it says there about the lighthouses. Um, I hope that you have a great evening. Get this work done. And tomorrow uh, we'll get back to a little bit more prepositions. Thanks so much for showing up. We love you.